If you're a fan of old school bodybuilding, then make sure to check out Subs the Movie. Filmmaker Alex Ardenti explores the $40 billion sports supplement industry, delving into the origins, evolution, and current state of supplements used by millions of fitness enthusiasts worldwide, available at Amazon and Vimeo. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookham here. Of the many stories of the natural bronze era athletes, the one I find most baffling of all is the story of Fred Rollon and how he developed his physique. Many old timers built powerful bodies with globe barbells and dumbbells, and some claim to have done so with chest expanders. And of them, Fred Rollon was the greatest. Fred Rollon was an old time professional strongman. The pics you see here were taken in the early 1900s, long before steroids and supplements. The most interesting thing about Fred Rollon was that, as he said himself, unlike many of his colleagues, he never trained with barbells or dumbbells, and he only used chest expanders. Aside from being a strand pulling champion, he had a super impressive physique. While many strongmen frowned upon chest expanders as a means of testing strength, preferring weights instead, Rollon was never beaten at cable pulling. For sheer muscular separation in upper body, no one had ever surpassed Rollon. Named by his peers as the human anatomy chart, a look at this photo tells you why. This has to be the most impressive back double biceps photo ever taken in the bronze era. The photos that exist of Fred Rollon are a true testament to his training methods and speak volumes of the merits of cable training, so much so that many a bodybuilder and young trainee would start to train vigorously with chest expanders and strength cables. Just look at the utterly ridiculous muscular development of Fred Rollon. This most muscular pose has got to be one of the best from the bronze era. Sure, we have seen the shredded physiques from this era in a recent video of mine showcasing the effect of combining yoga, muscle control and bodybuilding, but the muscular density and size in combination with the definition presented here by Fred Rollon is truly mind-blowing. Mind you, this photo was taken in the year 1905, so don't you dare tell me that testosterone was around back then. All that amazing natural physiques are not possible without the aid of PEDs. Give me a break. You only need the most basic equipment and to push yourself hard and the results will come. As mentioned, Fred Rollon was often referred to as the human anatomy chart, and as you can see with very good reason. Of most interest is his baffling claim. Rollon claimed to have never lifted weights at all, and that he only trained with just expanders. That's right, Fred claims to have never trained with barbells or dumbbells, and only with expanders and cable sets. Now I know that is a pretty wild claim, and there probably is no evidence to prove or disprove Fred's statement, but if you look carefully, real closely in this most muscular pose, you can see that Fred Rollon has an expander handle in his hands. It was said that the bands he trained with had a resistance level of over 300 pounds and could withstand horses. Now that's some pretty strong cables. This may be the only proof of what Fred actually stated and that maybe it was the truth. And I mean, I can't judge him. He had nothing to hide back in 1905. However, some do say that he did train with weights later on in his life. At least that is what has been said about him. Fred Rollon, born probably around 1880 in Berlin, was also called the German Muscular Miracle, and he set up a trade for stretching thick rubber bands once he had become a professional strongman, further adorned by declaring himself the world champion in 1902. On posters, he stated that the resistance value of his chest expanders, as I've mentioned, was 300 pounds or 140 kilograms, with the addition that he would spread them to a greater length before a couple of horses could, hence why it was also stated that it could hold horses. In addition to all kinds of rubber stretching, Roland was also able to bend a strong nail and an iron rod or tear decks of cards. On a tour of the Russian Empire, he even offered the audience a sum of 1,000 rubles to anyone who would repeat his performances. Once during a performance in Minsk, someone asked, 
to show real strength and Roland responded by pushing 120 kilograms over his head without tilting his torso at all. Then added more discs, laid on his back and did several reps of lying repetitions, basically uh, floor presses, with 165.7 kilograms. Roll-on measured 178 centimeters, weighed 84 kilograms, with a neck circumference of 43 centimeters, biceps of 43 centimeters. And the photographs that document his elaborate muscularity on his back are the ones that earn him the nickname Human Anatomical Chart. Regarding chest expanders and cables, there is much to be explored and said regarding this form of training. Understanding that old timers like Sandow, Professor Attila, John Grimmick, and Reg Park all used them should indicate how useful they really are at developing a natural muscular and powerful physique. So finally, I want to ask you, do you think that Fred Rollon used only cables to develop his physique? Leave your comments in the comment section and I do hope you have found this video of interest. I truly am amazed at Fred Rollon and in the bronze era in general. These guys were complete badasses and made no excuses whatsoever training with whatever equipment they had to produce some of the most spectacular natural physiques ever witnessed in human history. I will continue to bring more about this era on this channel, reintroducing the wonderful characters and physiques and training methods from back then and the methods these guys used over 100 years ago. If you have enjoyed this video, please give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't done so yet, and please leave me your comments. And click the bell button to be notified of any future videos. Please also head to my website for online coaching and for books on the methods used by Silver Era strongmen such as Sandow, Strongfoot, Klein, Jowett, Liederman, and others. That's it from me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. Now, if you're interested in learning Sandow's different bodybuilding systems, please visit my website where you will find the most comprehensive collection of ebooks on the subject. Everything from Sandow's chest expander system, which involved pulling and extension movements, to the light dumbbell system, which involved pressing, curling, and flexing movements, as well as the Sandow developer, which essentially was one of the first cable stations available for the home gym. All the relevant ebooks to all these courses are available on my website www.goldenerabookworm.com. As a natural bodybuilder, it is imperative to know your own testosterone levels as they are a reflection of the anabolic environment created by your diet and training. I would highly recommend using the male hormone test kit from Let's Get Checked and make sure you use my code GOLDEN30 for a 30% discount. Again, the advantage of checking yourself regularly is that you will know how well your body is anabolically primed to put on the much desired muscle you are working for. Online training is now available, including my new program, Novice to Classic, a program geared towards beginners and novices looking at developing a classic physique, as well as Classic Cut, geared at those who wish to lose weight and gain muscle fast. Details available at www.goldenerabooking.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platts, and Larry Scott, and much, much more, and select your poster now. To support your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. I don't think that Bill Phillips looked at it as I want to compete against them. I want to destroy them. If they pass legislation basically making any type of food supplement a prescription item, that would be the end of death of the entire food supplement industry. In the 1960s, the sports supplement industry was barely emerging. I think the reason why Joe Weider was so successful was he had Arnold on his side. He wasn't selling supplements. 
He was in the dream business. Joe Weider was a marketing genius. People would say the promotions or the endorsements back then were cheesy. To me, it wasn't. I loved it. Fitness was taking off. You know, fitness became cool. You had a lot of readers that wanted to be like the stars that they idolized. Bill's strength is his marketing savvy. He's a marketing genius. Got it, got it. It's only vitamin. The right of American citizens to have free access to dietary supplements of their choice. Consult your physician. You might as well consult the next guy you meet on the street. They don't know a damn thing about vitamins and nutrition. The dietary supplement industry became the number two most regulated industry. Nuclear, dietary supplements, pharmaceutical. We are more regulated than drugs. They come in and you uh, need to allow the FDA. They have jurisdiction. The enforcement is kind of the questionable side of it and how do they really get a handle on this monster? A lot of people tell me that the dietary supplement industry is completely unregulated. It's the wild, wild west out there. It's a free for all. That could not be further from the truth. A dietary supplement is not allowed to have a side effect. I always say the pharmaceutical has to have a minimum of 100 side effects in order for it to be a drug. And now, it's a $40 billion industry and growing. That's the really interesting thing, is the cast of characters from the 80s, when it was kind of iffy, to now when it's a lot more legitimate. They made it sound cutting edge, revolutionary, and different, and I want that. That's cool. We are in this industry to improve our health. It's not just a vanity project here. We're working on our lifeline. We eat a certain way to improve our health. We train a certain way to improve our health. Supplements are just that. They supplement your work, your graft, your nutrition. Uh, they demonize dietary supplements, but they say all you need is real food. Well, what's a real food? They pump you up and get you harder, stronger, faster, bigger. Doc, I want to take this weight gain. I want to take this pre-workout. Doctors, no, no way. I, that stuff, we don't know what's in that. It could be, no way. I'm not going to give you, it's going to kill the industry, bottom line. So I must have dragged so much protein powder from age 15 to 18 that my head was gonna explode. <laughs> I believed in metrics so much that I would probably punch somebody in the face if they tried to take it away from me.